Hi there, I'm Mike Mike 37 and today I'm going to be giving you a real quick tutorial on how to make a level in the Dragon Age toolset. Specifically an interior level and I'll be making a room, just the one. Okay, so first thing we need to do is File, New, Level. We don't want an area, don't go an area. We want a level. Level. Make sure you're picking Room Level. Next, and there's no more options so hit Finish. We need to make a room to place objects in. This just allows us, uh, by using several rooms, to hide things from other rooms. Just saves on system resources. So right click on the area, insert, new room. Now we can place our models in there. The models tab is the blue cube here. And here we can use the filter to uh, search for certain things. Here I've got door up and it's showing everywhere that there's a door. Um, but you can use it for anything. So I'm going to be using FHI, which is uh, for Elden Human Interior. And that brings up the stuff that I'm interested in right now. Just expand to find a object you're looking for. So in this case I'm looking for floor wood. Click on it once and in, with the new room selected click in the um, area. If you find that you're getting an error that looks a little bit like this um, cannot spawn models into selected parent object that's because you've not got a room selected. So just highlight your room again and click the object and place it again. If you're not sure what object you want, need to use, um, there's a really good model list with pictures on the Builder Wiki. Um, so have a look on there for pictures of stuff if you don't don't know what you're looking for. Okay, quick tools when placing stuff. Um, we need to use uh, three-axis movement. You can do this by hitting Q on the keyboard. Um, if you need to rotate the camera, hold down the middle mouse button, which will pan it, and hold down Alt and middle mouse button, which will rotate it. This widget here, when you're using the 3-axis movement, can be used um, to rotate either in one axis by clicking and dragging just uh, one of the arrows, or clicking in the middle of them to move in two axes. You can rotate using the 3-axis rotation up here, and click on one of the loops to rotate it in one axis, or I guess you can click in the middle, but I've never seen anyone use that uh, productively, so I don't really know why that's there. Uh, but generally, you'll just be moving in one. Uh, you might find that they're snapping, um, which is on the whole quite useful because it allows it me to, for example, place that just next to it, um, and it'll snap into place. And because of the way the tile sets have been built, everything's kind of three meters by three meters, um, so snapping is generally a good thing. Uh, but if you don't want that on, you can go to the magnet up here, click that once, and uncheck the enable snapped grid. Or you can change this number here if you find you want uh, smaller increments or something like that. Uh, same goes for rotation over here. Snap to surface is the one that things uh, sort of slap down on the surface. So if you're finding that your uh, height of something keeps changing, untick this one. On the whole, I tend to use, leave it off, uh, but sometimes it's useful. You can use Control and C and Control and V um, and select multiple objects using Control to copy and paste. Um, so that could be a, a way of speeding your workflow up a little bit. And it's a good idea um, to group things into um, folders, uh, so select all the objects, you can select them in here, right click, um, grouping, create group from selection, and name your group is always helpful, so I'm going to name this floor, uh, and then go around placing all of your other objects. Um, if you get into a situation where you're not sure whether you should be using uh, a PRP or a PLC, um, that's quite a common one, um, so here's the PRP folder, and Oh, PLC right above it. Should have seen that. Um, and quite often they'll have a lot of stuff. Um, PRP is a prop and is intended for static use, which is exactly what we want in a level. Um, PLC is a placeable and is intended for interactive use, which generally we don't want in a level. Um, if in doubt, think about whether you want your player to click on the object. If it's a door, generally you want the player to be able to click on it so that they can either transition to a new area or open the door which means it is an interactive object, so you don't want to be putting that in your level at all. That needs to be in your area, so don't put things like doors in levels. Um, that's a pretty pretty standard thing. So uh, I'm not going to show you like me placing lots of stuff, I'm just going to go uh, skip a few, and here we have um, whoops, easy. Here we have a level, um, pretty much assembled. Go away. Um, so that's just placing uh, walls, and uh, that's a doorway thing, and I've got a, a ceiling in there. Um, I think, somewhere. Oh, we've got a fade cutaway. That's sometimes useful to use, um, which shows you when the player um, looks top down on their character. Fade cutaway is in use when they are not. Um, 
fade cutaway is not in use and we can see the ceiling now so that's good um, so always design your levels ensuring that things um, when top down hide with fade cutaway and things that um, you want to show at all times do not fade cutaway so toggle this on and off to make sure things are looking about right uh, if things aren't looking right it's in the object inspector you can change it over here cut away override set that to either true or false leaving it on none just keeps it on default so things like ceilings will automatically hide and walls will not okay so um, it's looking a little bare so I suggest um, oh, I, I put these props in um, so I'll unhide these now that one wasn't supposed to be there um, so I've got a, a torch in here that's a visual effect if you're looking for things like uh, fire or um, water they'll often be prefixed with FX or FXE, FXI that kind of thing um, so that's where you can find those um, and yeah, various props and stuff, fairly straightforward. Um, but there are a couple of things that are still wrong with this level. Um, firstly, when the player looks at it from outside, they can see like bits of wall and stuff. The black on the back of the walls is um, an attempt to hide stuff, but it's rarely enough. Um, so you need to use uh, objects that are called BLK, that's for black. And these are just black boxes uh, in varying sizes. Um, so here's, here's a black box, it really is just a box of black. Um, but you can use that, and I've used that now, to um, hide stuff that you don't want the player to be able to see. So here we go, I just surrounded it with black. Try not to use any more black than you need to use, um, because if people want to use your room and put stuff next to it, and you've got a massive black box next to it, um, they're going to have to do that again, which is a pain in the ass. Um, so black boxes... <coughs> what else have we got? Collision. If you have problems with collision, um, you can have a look at that using the Visualize Collision Objects. Um, so here probably everything's okay. The only slight danger would be uh, the player might be able to walk on top of the table if I had a, a maybe s a small crate there or something like that and you end up being able to step up on top of it. So if you are having problems with your collision um, you can solve those by uh, adding collision objects which are prop col. Here we go. Uh, so wall is kind of useful. Um, is it wall? No. It's a bit big. Uh, here we go. Um, it's just uh, uh, simply something to stop the player being able to walk through something. Um, so you can position that um, maybe there and let's paste another one and rotate it maybe there and use visualized collision objects to see where these are. So line them up and now your player won't be able to walk walk to that area of the bit, which is a good thing. Um, Okay, so all that remains is to add some lighting. Now, uh, think about your light sources. So here we've obviously got a torch on the wall, um, but that's going to create really strong lights. Um, we add lights by uh, with, maybe you've got a new group, if not just the room, um, selected, right-click, insert, new light. Don't try and use a model for a light. Um, they, that's, that's not, it's not what you do. So, uh, new light. <coughs> raise it up so it's not on the floor. Um, to begin with it won't look like it's doing anything at all. Uh, when you're lighting always uh, turn off view models fully lit. That's really helpful for placing stuff but when you're doing your lighting you just won't see the actual lighting scenario. So turn that off and we can see oh everything's gone very dark. Um, so that's because the, the light isn't set up properly right now. We need to change the light type from point baked. Um, we're going to change it to point static um, and now at least have something showing. Um, useful fields are color and uh, color intensity, so turning this up will make it brighter. Um, I'm not going to give a massive tutorial on how to do lighting. Um, here's kind of one I did earlier, I guess. Um, so I just added uh, the, the single animated light, which is kind of correct for, for flickery sh um, fl flickering lights like torches. Um, so that's an animated light, and this is just a point light, um, just so that the shadows aren't quite so strong. Um, it's also usually a good idea to add a baked light to give um, baked shadows because that looks a little bit more realistic um, than the in-game shadows of point lights. So that's really all the basics. Um, something I'd like to show you though is uh, how to make a selection group. Uh, what a selection group is, is it is um, essentially a, a blueprint of all the objects um, that you choose to put in it and it'll allow someone to simply um, I guess paste them into their own level or whatever. Um, so typically you'd use this for like, I don't know, 
a table with some stuff on and you've carefully placed all this stuff but uh, I'm going to use it for the whole room so I can uh, easily paste in the whole room again or whatever so select all of the objects in your scene um, make sure you've not, you're not picking the room itself, pick, pick the objects themselves so uh, edit, export selected and you'll be given a dialog, where do you want to save your uh, SEL file I'm just going to save it to my uh, desktop I think <coughs> Uh, I'm going to call it room because I'm not very creative like that. And now we'll just slide along a little bit. Edit, import selected. Oh, my mistake. I need to make a new room. Sorry. Um, so right click, insert new room, just like I did before. And now edit, import selected. And here's my room. And it's somewhere. Where is it? There it is. I don't know what it's doing over there. Um, but that's it. So see how handy selection groups are? And you can use that for um, placing lots of your stuff. If you've got it in folders and you want to copy paste stuff, or if you want to be a um, real sly dog and just copy and paste from the um, Dragon Age levels, if you're finding that, oh, I can't pick, you know, I can't copy and paste two folders, which which you can't uh, using Control c Control v it just doesn't work, um, or it seems to cause problems, you can uh, export them as a, a selection and use it that way. So they're pretty handy to know and um, if you're entering the community contest, uh, that's how we'll be taking your stuff as a selection. Um, so hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, I look forward to seeing some new levels. Bye.